Hey guys, I'm back again with Carrier Battles. Um, I got the uh, I got this new uh, DLC from the developer, the uh, the Seaplane DLC, and they've uh, very kindly asked me to do a video on it. Uh, and I of course agreed because um, I do really enjoy the game, uh, and I'm interested to see uh, how the new Seaplanes work. So first, I'm gonna take us over to the rules real quick. There's a new Seaplane rules section. The gist of it is you can create seaplane airfields at places, basically at different places, to try and surprise your enemy with scouting missions from different places, essentially. Also, they can be launched from cruisers. You can now control the seaplanes. Uh, one of the big changes, I think, is that no longer... Uh, basically, your carriers can no longer launch fast and slow scouting missions, with the uh, idea being that a slow scouting mission scouts more area, or scouts less area but more thoroughly, while a fast scouting mission scouts more area less thoroughly. Instead, the seaplanes now do the slow, close by scouting, and the carriers launch the long range scouting operations, which I think will be interesting to see how that dynamic plays out. Um, also, now you can see, now we have seaplane raids, which will be a thing, because you can raid the bases and knock them out and slowly degrade your enemy's, um, what's the word, scouting capability. And you have large and small seaplanes, you can launch them in cruisers, uh, I'm looking to see if there's anything about it. It's, they have their bases, they have maintenance capacity, which is how many seaplanes can operate out of them. Uh, was there anything else? Oh yeah, these are the rules for building a seaplane base. Essentially, when you build a seaplane base, it's entirely reliant on the ship that built it, and so the ship that built it has to stay there. Um, trying to remember... There's a reason to do it. I think it has something to do with transports, carrying seaplanes to a place to set up a seaplane base to then launch it, as opposed to cruisers, which have a seaplane hangar built onto them, which is why you might wish to build one. Not entirely sure how it works out, Oh, I think they uh, I think they have new tutorials as well. Could do Wake Island. I feel like the revenge raids are a new a new um, option. First counterattacks of the U.S. fleet area against Rabal. Oh, this is an interesting option. I think I'm going to play the U.S. here. Because the revenge raids are an interesting snap raid that the U.S. conducts right after Pearl Harbor with their carriers. Um, to, on some level, just get back in the damn war. Uh, the, the gist was they'd been punched real hard in the nose. Uh, and I think this was even prior to the Coral Sea. And this was meant to just throw a wrench into some part of the Japanese plan. Uh, Lord knows which part. Oh, I... I feel like these textures are higher quality than they were before, but I may have just been messing with the settings beforehand as well. Uh, once he was carrier carrier could have been involved in any battle. Uh, let's see. <laughs> once U.S. carrier or carrier aircraft have been involved in any battle. We have to boogie. Alright, makes sense. This is a snap raid. Close and then attempt a surprise attack against Rabal. So that's the scenario info. Historical notes. Uh, the U.S. is compelled to make carrier raids. Yeah, essentially. Brown leading to Lexington against Rabal. Lexington and Rabal. from the south if you want to attack Japanese shipping at Ley from the Gulf of Papua. Alright, so we gotta blow up transports to the Ley port, more as be. Oh, I don't know about that second part. Yamato's plan to ambush them at Midway is actually not that crazy, and I will go into that because I wrote my entire senior thesis on why the historical battle at Midway makes complete sense from the Japanese side. It's up to the part everything explodes and dies. Um, but I do take issue with the crazy. 
That's 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 an interesting one. Um, note for all you all sinners. The U.S. naval setup sticks to the historical. The Japanese setup is historical, but task force position many sinners offering cover operations spread of one or two weeks. But the game duration has been reduced to a few days. Okay. No Kaga and no torpedoes. All right. Let's go to the map. So I think it's just. Is it just Lady Lex? No, it's the Yorktown and the Lexington. Yeah, there's been a definite graphics tweak here. I like it. That is the seaplane base at Rabal. Rabal seaplane base with a maintenance of two. Where is Lai? There's Lai. All right. Let's try and find. Oops. I'm sort of trying to remind myself how all the stuff works. Let's see, with the Lexington, since stealth is our key, she can support six. That's in Task Force 11. Who's supporting in Task Force 17? The Astoria and the Louisville. As well as the Yorktown with eight uh, wings that they can support quickly. Task Force 44 has decent smattering of these. I wonder if I can prep these to scout. You know, we'll go ahead and get all their aircraft ready to scout for us. Uh, I doubt too much that any of them will be involved in anything major today. But I do want them ready just in case. And we'll get those uh, scouting missions up over uh, here. Now, where is the Coral Sea we have to retreat to? Here. And any carrier on a star region moves faster than usual. Also, we can create a seaplane base right here if we so desire. Don't know why we would. Or here. Now, here's where we can create it. Let's see if there's anywhere uh, interesting we can put it. A seaplane base uh, right here actually might not be a terrible idea. It would give us a good scouting of the entire western sector, letting us look at the uh, Gizmata and Lai. Uh, let's see what ships are part of Task Force 44. Task Force 44 has three cruisers, crew, two cruiser lights, a couple BDs, CV, two cruisers, and a plethora of destroyers. Every cruiser that's not doing something else, and a smattering of DDs. All right. We'll get those scouts set up. Those scouts are going to... I'm going to try and maintain a sort of scouting presence over this area at all times. To try and detect whoever is heading for this. I think those transports are running from Lai to Bougainville. And we are going to sink them. Immediate res. So you are getting autopiloted over to here. Yorktown. 
I honestly kind of want it to sail towards where the Lexington is. The Lexington is going to go... Be not on autopilot. Alright. Because we're being sneaky about this, we're putting everyone on cap. If anyone spots us, it's going to be the last thing they do. Same thing for the Lexington. Well, no, actually, because we're sending a raid to Rabal. Put four of them on cap. And we'll have one standing by to escort the ungodly amount of uh, SPDs we're going to be sending to Rabal to hit them in a first strike. Alpha strike sort of thing. I wonder... I don't think we can reach Rabal right now, but I want—I do want to check the um, range we would need. Twenty distance to fly. Twenty. Okay, well, it's not something we're doing anyway. What am I doing? These guys are all going on cap. Not into the hangar. <laughs> I'm gonna reload these guys. Uh, with that said, we will start by... I want a screen of scouts going north and west. So... One, task force 11. We'll also set this to be a uh, northwesterly, but at Let's see, Cairns, Townsville, and Port Moresby. Cairns and Townsville are down here. There's not even anything in Cairns, so we'll just keep that as an anti-aircraft defense, I suppose. I'm more curious if I can strike anything with the B-17 from Townsville. Yeah, I didn't think so. Well, we'll just keep an eye on the ocean then, I suppose. Right, Port Morrisby. What is the A-29? A29 is a thing that I want to fly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, we'll put it at eleven. 
You know, 15 for good measure. If we're doing scouting, we may as well scout. Christ knows we got the fuel for it. Lady Lex will make the first moves of the opening round. We're getting those air ops up. Should get everyone situated. We can probably move forward an hour. It may have been timing to the start of um, air operations then. I do want to get the Lexington sneaking closer to Rabal. We're going to try and utilize these storms for uh, for cover to try and sneak past the Japanese uh, air patrols. There we go. Okay, it looks like that's our seaplanes taking off there. Heading out on there. Oh. heading out on their long search missions. Uh, I would much prefer to do my scouting with seaplanes in this particular regard, since we know where the opponent is. We don't need our scouts to be fast. We just need them to give us a more or less rough idea where the opposition is. If, they, if we were, I was looking for, say, a carrier group or something, I would be a bit more antsy about... Um... I'm a little bit confused by the the 16, though. I don't know why I have um, a deck capacity of 16 right now. So if I wanted to set someone to, say, Escort. Yeah, okay, that's more what I thought. We're probably at 4 with 2 SBDs able to be built up right now. Okay, let's talk hypotheticals. Let's say I want to spot and launch a strike against Rabal. Sure. No, maybe not Rabal seaplane base. Maybe more Rabal proper. Okay, so the mission range is 18 currently. Okay. Mission range is 18. We need to get within 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we need to get to within here, essentially. We're gonna go ahead and try and sprint across the um, open waters here between the storm. Try and get that first raid off real quick. Yorktown's gonna back us up. So far, I'm not seeing anything here. Scout spotted over Task Force 11. Well, time to spot that strike. I got two hours to launch at that one.
and I want to see the mission breakdown again. 14. So we gotta get there. Semi quickly. We've got one more um, strike to launch, though. We'll get that guy running on that side. Lexington being a bit overworked, as it is now. Task Force 11. I'm hoping to get that strike off and then boogie the hell out. So that we can uh, get the Lex, or not the Lex, the uh, Yorktown, uh, striking things up here, along with the Lexington. But if we can't do it, we can't do it. How's that strike coming along, guys? 40 minutes? Alright, range of 13. We are basically at the maximum range for this airstrike. But it is technically in range, and it covers our scouting. Our scouts should get advanced warning of any airstrike coming in. Alright, alright. I think this is going to work out just fine. a flight of A6 M5s. Tell me the cap is still up. The cap is still up. They're launching in zero minutes. It is going to come down to the wire. And that's our strike out. A5Ms. Are those the like the they're not Kates, but they're like something different. I think all of our cap is going to be up though for this. We might just barely get the strike off on our ball. We're going to have to hope the carrier makes it through the G, um, the bombers essentially. But we've got a fairly strong combat air patrol up in front of them. And it's the middle of a typhoon. Yeah, that'll knock a couple of the Bettys down. Now we just gotta see if we survive. Lexington has taken a single torpedo hit, but is otherwise alive, which is fairly decent, all things considered. And so we've lost our surprise effect here. So no more spooky, uh, no more spooky stuff. We'll head over there, try and set up a seaplane base. You can't retreat, is the thing. So we're just gonna be hanging around the area for a while until our airstrike gets back. Lest we abandon all our pilots to their fate. Small surface group. That may be the planes we're looking for. Let's see. Two zeros, two A5Ms. Oh, we doesn't seem we've surprised them. Yeah, well, we just lost a TBD. The TBDs are going to get shot out of the war anyway. Well, we've smashed the ball. That SPD got smacked.
All right. Then we will probably boogie down south in this direction. We're trying to maintain a screen of scouts off to the side. We'll launch another one in two turns. Meanwhile, Task Force 17 will come over here and, I don't know, cover our side. Scouts. When we get back, we are going to stick the F4F F on to um, Oh, damn, it's on autopilot, which means it auto moved. That's going to put some of our SBDs under a bit of a tighter fuel restriction. What are you guys doing? They're making it. They're making it. It's... Their fuel's restricted, but they're making it. We'll get the Yorktown to start running a couple scouting missions out here. We'll do the, um... 120... Go as far as you can, man. And they'll just scout out the area over here. I doubt there's anything coming to grab us from the left flank, but I prefer to know about it if something wanted to. Now, this is what it looks like when it's a slower scouting mission. It covers a massive... Uh, portion of the ocean. That F4F is getting slapped onto cap. Trying to see if we can get um, a figure in. A figure in and a fix in on what exactly that is. I want to readjust this one to be a kind of exactly what it is a longer ranged version of that. We're going to reassign the Minneapolis scout plane to go out a bit further. Same thing with the uh, Indianapolis. There we go. Okay, so we've got our point for striking Rabal. They've got a point from hitting us. Now we just have to get either control of the or control of Baku. We'll spot him at some point. Okay, so it's not the autopilot, it's the ship having to automatically retreat anyway. I'm going to have the Yorktown sail right over here. <laughs> we are going to strike the crap out of that landing at Port Moresby. Uh, Port Moresby, I want these guys to set up for bombs. Because when they land at Ley, they become automatically detected. And we are going to drop every bomb in our arsenal on them. I think that's how it works. Anything important happen? Task Force 44. That's honestly a bit disconcerting. I don't really know who would be around to send a spotting plane after us, but I would very much like to know where the hell that thing came from. Alright, 
with the Lexington, I think I'm going to change when they get back at least. I'm going to change this one to search in front of me so that I can see not only where I've been, but also where I'm going. They're keeping close tabs on Task Force 11. We'll, we'll at least set a direction that we're heading towards. It's just the Lexington, though, that's taken a hit. We'll run it for an hour now and see if anything... Nothing more than some long-range float plane scouts. Nothing too spectacular to be honest. Though I will admit they're freaking me out a bit. Alright, let's see if Task Force 11 has sorted themselves out. I wish I could, uh... It's like the seaplane's a bit easier. Okay, there we go. We will set this to be a southwesterly... Should run just fine. Lexington is kind of at capacity when it comes to keeping aircraft in the air. I don't think Task Force 17 is going to get bothered, but it never hurts to have extra cap. We'll see what another hour does. I want you to be on repeat. Set them on repeat. Uh, no real warrant being given to anything over here. We're not going back over there anyway. Storms moving over the Bismarck Sea will make scouting difficult. Your weather over the Coral and Gulf of Papua. Uh, actually, I don't want to stay too close to Port Moresby. I'm trying to think of a good way to be close enough to support Port Moresby without being close enough to get killed at Port Moresby. Because uh, I'm sure the Japanese are going to start airstriking Port Moresby when they can't think of anything better to do. I don't want to just run into my carriers all of a sudden. Uh, that cruiser group also... will go here for best use of scouting planes. My guess is we're about to hit the end of air operations. I think that comes at 2,000. Yeah, there it is. Alright, so since Nothing's probably going to happen in the middle of the night. And for some reason we have to retreat down this way and can't retreat that way, which is odd. Oh, well. Uh, we'll just run this for... I think six hours takes us to the beginning of air operations. Okay. 
All right. Port Moresby. Okay, I want a 60 degree hex search. No, I want a bit wider from Port Moresby. 120 for, f not even 15, do it for 10. Just get out there and start looking. That ought to be good. We'll set that back to like 15 for now. We'll prep our uh, aircraft. Oops. For scouting. Going to adjust something really quick. Whoops. There we go. Uh, the Yorktown, I don't expect to get bothered by the Japanese back here, to be honest. I'll put a couple guys on cap, like four guys to fly on cap. Hell, it's probably more for practice than actually because I think we're going to be attacked. But you never know. It's good to have guys with bullets in the air. I mean, what, like, the worst that can happen is we waste some gas on the aircraft carrier and crash our planes landing in the storm in the middle of the day. That's not that bad. Scouting planes should be heading out from Port Moresby any second now. In fact, I believe they are. That's them right there. And there, yeah, there they go. Covering the landings at uh, Lai? Lai? Speed forward by an about an hour. Now that I think about it, the Yorktown is not going to be attacked. What am I waiting on? We're gonna slap some torpedoes on all three of these guys. How much room do I got to operate? I got one, three, five bombs. Ready in like 20 minutes, are you sure? Um, well, we'll just keep that that initial strike spotted on the deck of the uh, Yorktown. Because that's a fairly sizable strike. I don't know, do I want to strike with torpedoes? Because the, the, the TBD Devastator is not really that... It's not that great of a bomber. Let me check the um, actual rules on airstrikes real quick. Uh, no, I'm looking for actual... There it is. Ruggedness. Search radius. Air to sea factor. Okay, upper right hand corner. Oh, that is one thing the game does very well. It is very easy to look up rules. Uh, the SBD is way better than the TBD. Okay. So we're going with three more SBDs. Yeah, that ought to smack something out of them. Oh. Uh, 
Fort Moresby. Yeah, those are those are repeats. Really hope they don't like repeatedly land or something. Okay, good. Uh, task Force 17. Get our seaplanes out, going out. Task Force 44. We'll get our first seaplanes out there too, and Task Force 11 should be along pretty quickly. But well, we know they gotta land here eventually. So just covering the area in scout planes uh, ought to do it. Hmm. There's something. We have a scout plane shadowing them right now. Position update last at 12 o'clock. How are you guys on spotting that strike? Task Force 11. Really? Hmm. Still a pretty darn powerful naval strike, regardless. Okay, we'll prep that strike in two waves. We'll launch one strike will be the first initial strike with the dive bombers. So that's 14. Equals 1 plus the ship's life points, plus 2 against the carrier, plus 2 points of light AA, minus 2. I'm going to set them as even for that. But also, I'm going to wait for them to get just a little bit closer, because that's the transport we want to strike. So we will probably be launching that strike at 1400. Let's see if we're actually just a little bit closer. That's close enough. We are going to throw these out evenly. Two waves of 40 minutes apart. The first one, seven times four is 28. So that's 28 SPDs hitting them, followed by about 20 mixed dive and torpedo bombers with the fighter escort. 
Sounds like an actual operational plan of action. Are they still being shadowed? No. Last update 20 minutes ago. They will probably be there. They'll be around. Damn it, we're close by. And that second strike should be raring to go right about now. Yeah, they should be thundering off the dork of the York deck of the Yorktown. The dork of the York Dorn. Alright. From now on Astoria, Louisville, those patrols are continuous. Alright, here we go. 1A5M. Yeah, okay. Driven off. 21 air to sea factors left. <laughs> Get slapped. Alright, that's one transport left below. Three transports left in flames. Christ. God, I love SPD dive bombers. Hit by two bombs, a major fire. Hit by four bombs, a major fire. One bomb, and it's kind of messed up. Five bombs, major fire. Propulsion destroyed. And that's the uh, seaplane tender. Their seaplane tender is dead in the water. Worth it. They're a little bit off from where we thought they were, so we're probably going to take some casualties due to um, fuel starvation. We probably could have waited to launch that strike until a bit later, but are you kidding me? Really? There's only one left? Those two zeros will probably make life a bit difficult for us. Okay, I'm actually surprised they... Didn't do so well. Only five air to sea factors left. This TBD is carrying bombs instead of torpedoes. Mm, shot down a zero, lost a TBD. It's kind of still a better trade, to be honest. Here's hoping we don't lose too much to fuel starvation. Okay, we lost an SBD to landing in poor conditions. Now a task force 17 with the Yorktown. I want to get that F4 up, up on cap as soon as possible. Um, just in case. The Lexington's got a guy on a circle cap, but they're not really in range of a strike. And it's kind of an odd search pattern. I'm gonna check through and make sure I didn't set someone to. I did. I set them to the wrong search. <laughs> uh, the Chicago and the Australia. I set them to search the uh, wrong part of the ocean. It's just the one transport pushing on now. It's just the one transport. How many are you processing right now?
Okay. Okay, the TBD, are you good at... Oh, wow, they're really... They can do land bombardment is about the only selling point the TBD has. They're gonna get in underneath the uh, nighttime radar. Since we're just waiting out night now, it's time for everyone to fly their evening cap. That's more just, um, I find it per good in a personal doctrine to launch all your fighters into a cap in the evening in case the someone does a Hail Mary and uh, chucks a bombing raid at you. In the evening. Task Force 11. Okay, it is 1720. So it's 1700. So enemy scout over Task Force 11. Someone destroyed a G4M. God knows where. Um. How are we doing for objectives so far? We have control of lay. Um, plane losses have been rather light. We're gonna lose Buka, but that's that's up to the Japanese. Just at least finding the carrier. There's no way we we're ever gonna stop that. Task Force Eleven. Well, Task Force Eleven is moving. And Task Force 11 is swarming with combat air patrol. So I'd be a little bit surprised if they uh, didn't make it. Also, it seems like everyone made it back from their fuel-starved death run. The Japanese will probably start landing it later tonight. So we probably won't completely prevent that invasion. Let me think. Let me guess that's probably Cap coming into land. Yeah. Alright. And we'll just skip forward. The Japanese are probably doing a night landing. Oh. There you go. They're also landing over there. Starting to unload at lay. Lie. Is there anything special about this beyond that? Okay, now. Okay, um. Reduced that to like 70 because I think it's one transport. Everyone else is going on cap. They have priority. Alright, so that strike will get off at about 5 o'clock, which is when air ops start. Task Force 11, the Lexington.
our Our Lady, Lex Luthor, will also begin putting together a strike against whoever. Also an even strike. And we'll get some scouting planes up today as well. When we get there, it'll probably just be destroyers. But that's fine. This is more of a mopping up raid. I want two scout planes in the sky. The Astoria and Louisville are sending along some scouts with them. Task Force 44. And that'll alert us if anyone else is trying to make the run to lie. Lay. Lolly, loo, lolly, lay. Alright, that strike should be flying out right now. <laughs> that is a lot of pain for what is effectively one transport. There's something else over there. Hold up. It's not really enough to mount an effective strike of any sort, but Task Force 11, do you? We're going to keep them on standby. Everything that we have that can be decisively committed is decisively committed. They hit something. It was five bomb hits and a major fire. Yeah, that's that ship's not gonna survive that. Oh, whoops. Uh, We'll send them after that other fleet, since it's just a bunch of destroyers, but they found something out there. Now oh, they found some actual battleships. Preparing to task force 17. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Best I can do is slam that carrier into the coast, effectively. It's a good day. <laughs> it's a good day to be the US Navy. Spreading the pain around. Let's see if that did anything to him. I think we just smacked a bomb onto everyone. <laughs> Except for one destroyer, which got hit by two freaking bombs. Christ. Yeah, they're, they probably call for a more compact strike. It doesn't seem like the air cover is very good over them. We'll launch... We'll launch a couple more strikes. Yeah, I bet they're running. How are we looking at victory points right now? We're we're winning. I don't think they have any of the transports required to land there. Yeah, 
Yeah, lots of scouts. That F4F is probably going to go down from fuel starvation. Yeah, he's going down from fuel starvation. Alright, Task Force 17. Okay, who's not got the range? It's the F4F. Uh, we'll just do an unescorted strike with the SPDs. We'll do a compact strike. They'll be fine. How long does that take to spot and strike? 40 minutes. Not good enough. It's actually quite fine. Hmm, they seem to be combating our uh, attempts to get a craft into this. They seem to be combating our spotting planes. Which is interesting to me. Get these being repeated, and I'm just going to flood this area with scouts. Anything important happening? Not particularly. Okay, the Lexington is going to be my air defense platform. It's barely even 9 o'clock. There we go. I can go in here, go to landing, set all those guys. To continuous. Aborted. Okay, that is... That's a bit further away than we thought they'd be, but we'll make the strike, get them there, and pull the carriers away from them. It's the cruiser light and a couple destroyers. And some zeros. We made it through the zeros okay. And planted a... gentle kiss on one destroyer. I'm calling it at 8 SPDs for a destroyer. There's nothing left worth killing in out there. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So. Yeah, they're going to have a tough time. We've been striking at the extent of our range for a while now. Oh shit, wake everyone up. <laughs> We're going to actually have to shoot down some people. guessing they're not going for Task Force 44 because it seems weird to me that they would. Task Force 
ask for 70. Send. We'll send one guy over. We'll send a flight of four over. They should kind of make it in time, maybe. Oh. They did make it in time, actually. That works out. We've got the rough equivalent of like a swarm of aircraft around them. Uh, we'll put you guys on there, throw you on continuous scouting. Let's see what the Japanese have to say and respond to everything we've been doing. So they'll hit us with uh, 12 bombers. We're going to smack them with 15 fighters. Yeah, that is a pretty good rebuke from the Lexington. And then we're going to try and skedaddle out of here, because they seem to have realized what's going on. We'll issue a recall for that guy. And I believe we'll go rebase down to somewhere in the Coral Sea. I mean, we'll, we'll stick around, Lay, in case something happens, but nothing's gonna happen. I mean, we blew up the entire transport fleet. What I'm looking forward to is reading the um, damage estimates, because the damage estimates are beautiful in this game. Such detailed descriptions of how the ships have disintegrated under bombs, and, uh, and that's a G3M. Is Lex ready for this? They are. I'll toss another one on the fire. Now we'll send both. We know what they want. didn't know what they wanted. No, we'll see if we can manage to survive this. Australia, Chicago, and Portland coming under attack by a small flight of G3Ms, but their AA drives it off. There's the recall for that flight of eight wildcats. I think we are rapidly approaching the end of air operations. There we go. We have a US strategic victory. We completed our raid against our ball. Uh, Lai was never lay, was never taken. 12 on the transports, a couple on the planes. Take a look at the details. Let's see the losses. Uh, for the Japanese, they lost uh, those G4Ms from the bombing raid and that G3M that was destroyed there. A 
couple scouting planes. That A5M from that spat above the transports that our Wildcats engaged. But an A6M2, uh, I want to say, at this point. Um, and, and that A6M from the fight somewhere. Uh, the Japanese ships were destroyed. And, I mean, they were smacked out of existence. Uh, one of them got hit by five bombs. The structure was broken. It caught on fire and the engine exploded. The other one was hit by two bombs, caught on fire and sank. Four bombs. A point of cargo is like half a division. So, yeah, I mean, four bombs hitting a tightly packed transport will kill everyone, effectively. And the Tenyo Maru was probably that... Um, was probably that seaplane transport. So let's see just what exactly that means. Major fire. Only load one, we can only unload one point of cargo. The ship will move slower. Cause more critical damage. No error refuel. Yeah. They all caught on fire massively. All in all, so each one of these represents uh, four aircraft. So the Japanese lost uh, four, eight, one, two, uh, four, seven, eight. So eight times four. So what's what is that? It's thirty-two aircraft for the Japanese and forty aircraft lost for us, plus about an infantry division. So we came out ahead. Also, we blew up Raval which probably pissed him off. All in all, how do I feel about the Seaplane DLC? It's uh, pretty fun in a much more intuitive way to run your scouting craft. Um, it does in some ways justify its existence as a DLC in that the Seaplanes are still utilized just automatically by the computer. Um, so it's not like you're going to miss out on the Seaplanes on some level. Um, and I think it's only like five to three bucks. Still, a part of me is a little bit um, conflicted because I do just really enjoy using the seaplanes and they feel like such an integral part of scouting scouting in this um, in this uh, I'm gonna call it a simulation uh, that I'm not entirely sure if they should be locked behind a paywall. But that said, if you're okay with the five bucks, um, it's a very fun DLC. And the scenario redesigns themselves, so that part aside, the scenario redesigns um, that are in here are very fun. And I mean, if you've, just, if you've got the game and you haven't played it for a couple months, come back and play it again. Just give it another shot. It's pretty fun on its own as is right now. I'm a little bit sad we didn't sink any of those light cruisers or destroyers, despite plonking a couple bombs on top of them. But, uh, should have done a compact strike, not an even spread. Um, all in all, I liked it. It was pretty fun. Alright, I've been Tomato. I'll see you on the next one.